Hi, my name is Reese, and I want to find out if the type of technology in a solar panel actually makes a difference. What I have right here are three solar panels, each rated for 200 watts. Each panel has a different solar technology. They're obviously different sizes, they have different features, and different costs. So the three types I have are a 200 watt SIGS panel, this is a newer thin film solar panel technology. All the way at the end here, I have a 200 watt rigid frame bifacial Topcon solar panel. This is perhaps the newest technology that's out. And then in the middle, I have your traditional 200 watt rigid solar panel, monocrystalline cells with a white back sheet. I'll talk a little bit more about the technology, but for this experiment, I have tried to keep everything the same. Same angle of 28 degrees, same orientation, 180 degrees south, obviously the same temperature outside, same power meters, same MC4 to XD60 cables, even same solar controller on three power stations. Each of these panels is basically brand new and I made sure that the front is clean, so hopefully with this setup, it will normalize the results. And because I have them laid out this way, the solar irradiance hitting all of these panels is about the same. And you can see with my meter, it's about a thousand watts per meter squared, which is about standard test conditions when they test solar panels and rate them. You want a thousand watts per meter squared at about room temperature. I'm gonna start this test with full sun and no shade and then run other scenarios like partial shading, cloudy days, and full shade, and then compare the results. And I wanna say thank you to Bouge RV who sent me these three panels after I had asked them if they would provide them for these tests. The main technology in this rigid solar panel is called perk passivated emitter and rear contact this is a common monocrystalline cell technology that's out there and i read it was the first technology that allowed solar panels to cross that 20 percent efficiency barrier one of the key characteristics that manufacturers do is put a film on the back side of the monocrystalline cell which helps it absorb more light now one of the ways you can tell these are monocrystalline cells is the color and the corners so i don't know if you can see the corners are cut a little bit and it matches down here. And I believe that's because when the ingot comes out, it's cylindrical and they find an efficient way to cut them. So that's why they're like that. Now you might see a solar panel that has a BB rating. That stands for bus bar. Those are these wires right here. This one is a nine BB, which means it has nine of these wires that cross over all of these cells in this direction. This panel is rated to have cells that are 23% efficient. And on the back side of this rigid panel, is a white back sheet, the junction box, and the connectors. This one is an N-type Topcon solar panel. It's also 200 watts like that one, but this one is smaller and lighter. It has 16 bus bars per cell, and it is a bifacial solar panel, so it can collect sunlight, turn it into electricity from the front, and also in the back, so you can see back here. Now this one's also lighter because it doesn't have glass back here, it just has the EVA film and that's enough to protect it because the glass is on the front and you're always facing it this way. So the cells on this panel are rated at 25% efficiency, better than 23%. Topcon, the technology stands for Tunnel Oxide Passivated Contact. Basically what this does is it takes the benefits of PERC and adds an oxide layer on top of the cell to help contain unabsorbed absorbed light. So think of it like a one-way mirror. Light goes in here and it's trying to help it stay in there so it can convert it to electricity. And the technology in the solar panel also helps it have a lower temperature coefficient, which basically means it works better in hotter temperatures. Now I think this one is the craziest solar panel of them all because you can roll this whole thing up. It's super flexible. This is the box that this solar panel came in. Look how tiny this is. And you can even store it in that box if you wanted to. So where this solar panel weighs about 24 pounds, this one's about 22 pounds pounds. This one weighs about six pounds. It's also 200 watt solar panel, but it does not use monocrystalline technology. It is a SIGS panel, which stands for copper, indium, gallium, selenide. It's flexible and very durable and has some very impressive characteristics like great shade tolerance because it has 48 bypass diodes, basically one per row here and it also works great in high temperatures. I have these type of solar panels on my RV roof and I've been very impressed with their output. These cells though are only rated at 17% efficiency versus these other ones which are higher. So we'll see if that makes a difference in the tests. For these tests, I'm using three of these same watt meters. I put MC4 connectors on the end. It gives all kinds of information, but the main one we're gonna be looking at is the power production number, which is measured in watt hours. So here's a cleaned up summary of some of the results that I saw after these tests I ran over the course of a month. Now the first category I wanna look at is full sun. So you can see there's four different uh, recordings right here. I actually did more than that. And over here I have the three panel technologies, the SIGs, PERC, and the TopCon. These are all in watt hours. 
And over here, this first four and a half hours, that was that opening scene that you saw. And in pretty much each of these categories, whether they were fa facing south or west, in full sun, the SIGS panel and the SIGS technology beat out the other two in all four of these categories. And pretty much in second place was Topcon, except for this first test, 609 watt hours to 611. The perk just did a little bit better. Uh, but in these other three, the Topcon beat the perk. So it was kind of like one, two, third place. And remember, all three of these solar panels are 200 watt solar panels facing the same direction and the same angle. So I'm really trying to test out the technology difference. For the next set of tests are with partly cloudy or partly sunny skies. Uh, I'm not sure what the correct description is. Let me know what you think. Is it partly sunny or partly cloudy? So even though there are some clouds in the sky in these tests, there are still some shadows on the ground. And if we look over at the spreadsheet, we can see that for a partly cloudy day, that there's basically a tie among these three panels, 123 watt hours each. And then on another test, it was 68, 67, and about 65. So almost all the same. So we'll say this was kind of a tie between those technologies. But when we look down here to these tests, where it was very cloudy conditions, where you can't even see the sun in the sky, and there's little to no shadows on the ground, there's a much bigger disparity. And so if we look here at this test, they're kind of similar at about 78, 79, 57 to 53, 32, 26. Now this was only over an hour. And then here over two hours, we have 91, 89, and 83. So basically the SIGS panel seems to perform the best in the more cloudier condition, but then second place looks like it belongs to the PERC panel. And then in third place, but not by much, is the TopCon panel. Now I wanna do a shading test on these three panels. I've covered up exactly half of each panel. It's different obviously, because they're different sizes. Let's take a look at our radiance meter. It's a little under a thousand watts per meter squared. The sun is over that direction, so it's not directly uh, you know, at a 90 degrees hitting the panels. And now I'm gonna shade the right half. So that's just the left half of each of these panels. And I got up real close to make sure the tape that I put down is right in the middle. So none of these cells on the left-hand side are getting blocked by any shade. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how I did this test by shading the bottom half or the one side of the solar panel. But if you look at the bottom half test when it was shaded, the SIGS panel, I'm kind of suspect of this number, but it, the test seemed correct. I expected it to make more than three watt hours though. The PERC panel made zero, and then the TopCon made 51 watt hours. So that's the clear winner when there's shade on the bottom half of the solar panel. Now, when we have the vertical half shaded, I did two of these tests, one at one and a half hours and one over two hours. The disparity is a little bit more clear. The SIGS panel did much, much better and the PERC panel hardly anything, and then the top con in a solid second place. So you can see that if you have shade on one half of your solar panel, SIGS is going to do very, very well, and the top con is also going to do well. Now, mind you, it also has that bifacial gain on the back side, so you want to add an angle to try to pick up that incident light. Um, so it's gonna do well, but not as well as the SIGS panel. Perhaps the hardest test is the full shade test because I had to make sure that no direct sunlight was going to hit the panels and mess up the results. And another potential factor in this situation is that with the panels producing such low power, the MPPT on the power station might not put the panel under the same consistent load. Regardless, I ran this test with several different power stations on different days, and the results seem to be consistent. So if we look at the spreadsheet for full shade, I have these three tests, four hours, two and a half, and 30. I had them facing north, so they were in the full shade of the house. And for the top con, there was very little bifacial gain because there was a lot of plants behind it. But here you can look at these numbers, the SIGs, 96 watt hours in this first test, 101, so the perk did better on this test, and then in third place was the top con. And that looks like it was consistent across these tests. So about 30, 15, 14, and then even this 30 minute test, 
the perk panel did better. So in the full shade situation, it seems like the perk solar panel technology did the best. Now, a small factor I didn't mention before is that it was pretty hot out during most of these tests with air temperatures averaging in the 90s, or that's around 33 degrees Celsius or so. This will give a slight edge to the SIGs and Topcon panels because they have better temperature coefficients. But if you go strictly by the results I got, to me, the clear technological winner was the SIGs panel. It also happens to be much more expensive than the rigid solar panels. And with it being longer and thin, it may not be good for your application. For example, you wouldn't want to put this on your house roof if you have asphalt shingles because there really isn't a great way to mount them. But on the surface where you can stick it onto, like an RV roof, it works great. I have the version that has the butyl tape on it. I could just stick it down. But you can get the one that just has the grommets or just roll it out on the ground and use it as a portable solar panel. The Perk and the Topcon have the aluminum frame and glass top, so not only are these much less expensive, they can be mounted on any rail system or secured down another way pretty easily. So if you're considering these panels, you have to weigh the technological benefit with the price and use case to make your choice. Remember, all three of these are 200 watt rated solar panels. They all performed well converting sunlight to electricity. And most of the time, you're going to have your solar panel in the full sun anyway. So I obviously didn't cover every solar panel technology that's out there, but these ones are readily available on the market, even sold on Amazon. I have links to any deals that I can find on these panels down below. Let me know what you think about the solar technologies and post any suggestions or questions please consider subscribing as I am building up this new channel with more solar content. Thank you for watching.